there's a lot of different pitfalls that people could run into. One of them is just not getting started. That's one of the biggest ones uh, overall. The central bank losing control of its own balance sheet, that it's unable to ever kind of re retain it back down, and they find themselves structurally monetizing fiscal debt uh, and always explaining why they're not really doing that, but their balance sheet's you know kind of going up cycle by cycle anyway at a faster rate than it used to. Um, and so that that's kind of the first step. I would say that we've been in kind of that fiscal dominant situation since around 2019. That wasn't a crisis in the sense that people didn't feel it, but you know that, and then you had the pandemic, and then you had the, the bank issue of 2023. Uh, you had the guilt crisis of, of late 2022. Um, over time, these things kind of add up. Recently, the famous economist Lynn Alden raised the concerns regarding the economy primarily centered around the impact of fiscal dominance, debt sustainability, and the effectiveness of traditional monetary policies in the current economic climate. The transition to fiscal dominance is evident in the scale of government spending in response to the COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent recovery efforts. For instance, the U.S. government passed several stimulus packages totaling over $5 trillion since the start of the pandemic. This massive fiscal injection aimed to stabilize and stimulate the economy during unprecedented shutdowns and disruptions. As of the first quarter of 2024, government spending continues to play a significant role, with the U.S. federal budget deficit projected by the Congressional Budget Office to be approximately $1 trillion for the fiscal year, indicating ongoing reliance on fiscal policy to manage economic outcomes. Alden underscores the shift from monetary to fiscal dominance, where government spending and expansive fiscal policies have become primary drivers of economic activity. This transition raises concerns about the potential for inefficient allocation of resources. As governments increase spending to stimulate economic growth or mitigate economic downturns, the risk of increasing national debt to unsustainable levels becomes a primary concern. The challenge lies in managing this spending without causing long-term damage to fiscal health which could lead to higher taxes or reduce public services in the future. The U.S. national debt has surpassed $34 trillion as of May 2024, according to the U.S. Treasury. The debt-to-GDP ratio, a critical measure of an economy's health, is hovering around 120 percent, significantly higher than historical norms. This level of debt raises concerns about the country's fiscal health and its ability to respond to future crises without resorting to drastic measures such as severe spending cuts or tax increases. The burden of public debt is another critical concern. Alden points out that the cost of servicing this debt, especially in a rising interest rate environment, could crowd out other essential government spending or require increases in taxation. The U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio has reached levels that many economists consider precarious, not just for economic stability, but also for financial confidence. High levels of debt could limit the government's ability to respond to future crises and may impose a significant burden on future generations. Inflation rates have been a major concern following the pandemic-induced economic disruptions. As of mid-2024, the U.S. Consumer Price Index CPI, has shown an annual increase of around 4%, significantly above the Federal Reserve's target of 2%. This persistent high inflation has prompted the Fed to increase interest rates, with the federal funds rate now approaching 5.5%. These rate hikes aim to temper inflation, but also raise concerns about slowing economic growth and the cost of servicing the national debt. With regards to inflation, Alden discusses the diminishing effectiveness of traditional tools such as interest rate adjustments. In an era of fiscal dominance, where government spending significantly influences economic dynamics, simply adjusting interest rates may not suffice to control inflation. This scenario complicates the Federal Reserve's task, potentially leading to scenarios where inflation remains high, eroding purchasing power and living standards. The economic structure is shifting with certain sectors benefiting from government expenditure. For example, infrastructure and technology companies have seen growth due to government contracts and initiatives aimed at enhancing digital and physical infrastructure. Conversely, sectors like commercial real estate have been under pressure, exacerbated by higher interest rates which increase borrowing costs, thereby dampening investment 
and expansion in these areas. Alden also touches on the structural changes in the economy due to BIPA policy and broader global shifts. She notes that sectors directly benefiting from government contracts or those aligned with government spending priorities may perform well. In contrast, sectors like commercial real estate might struggle under current monetary policies. This bifurcation in the economy could lead to increased inequality and sector-specific bubbles, further complicating economic management. Long-term sustainability remains in question with the current fiscal and monetary policies. The CBO projects that without significant policy changes, the U.S. will continue to face annual deficits of over $1 trillion for the next decade. This projection raises alarms about the potential for increased taxes or spending cuts in the future to manage the debt burden. Additionally, the ongoing high inflation could lead to further rate hikes, which may dampen economic growth and exacerbate the debt servicing challenge. Ultimately, Alden expresses concern over the long-term sustainability of current economic policies. The combination of high debt levels, reliance on fiscal stimulus, and potential inflationary pressures poses a significant challenge. Without thoughtful adjustments to both fiscal and monetary policies, there is a risk that these economic pressures could lead to stagnation or even recession. Lynn Alden's perspective on Bitcoin and investment strategies reflects a nuanced understanding of the evolving financial landscape, particularly in the context of digital currencies and their growing influence in global markets. Her thesis on Bitcoin hinges on its decentralized nature and its potential as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation particularly in economies experiencing financial instability. Alden positions Bitcoin as a counterbalance to fiscal irresponsibility and inflationary pressures, particularly in countries where trust in traditional banking systems and fiat currencies is eroding. This viewpoint is supported by Bitcoin's inherent properties. It is decentralized, has a capped supply, and offers transparency in its operations contrasting sharply with the often opaque and discretionary fiscal policies that characterize modern economies. The cap on Bitcoin's total supply, 21 million coins, is a critical feature as it promises scarcity and, theoretically, should retain value in the face of fiat currency inflation. The global adoption of Bitcoin is seen not just as a speculative investment but also as a practical response to systemic financial issues. In countries with high inflation or unstable currencies, Bitcoin provides an alternative means to preserve and transfer value. Its ability to facilitate transactions without the need for traditional banking infrastructure makes it particularly appealing in less developed financial systems. Alden also highlights the importance of stablecoins, which are cryptocurrencies pegged to more stable assets like the US dollar. These digital currencies combine the technological benefits of cryptocurrencies, such as ease of transfer and security, with the stability of traditional fiat currencies. They are particularly useful in regions where access to traditional banking is limited or where local currencies are volatile. Stablecoins can provide a stable medium of exchange and a safe store of value, increasing their utility for daily transactions and savings. Regarding investment strategy, Alden advocates for a diversified approach that incorporates digital assets alongside traditional investments like equities and real estate. Given the current economic environment marked by high inflation and potential fiscal instability, digital assets offer an alternative avenue for risk distribution. However, Alden cautions investors to consider their risk tolerance and investment horizon as digital assets can be highly volatile and are still in a regulatory gray area in many jurisdictions. In an era where traditional financial systems are increasingly intertwined with digital innovations, Alden's thesis supports the inclusion of Bitcoin and stablecoins in broader investment strategies. This approach not only capitalizes on the potential growth of digital assets but also hedges against systemic risks posed by traditional financial systems. Her outlook suggests that as digital currencies continue to mature and gain acceptance, their role in investment portfolios will become more pronounced offering both growth potential and financial security in a rapidly changing global economy.